Today on Under the Big Tree, the Erica Synths Polyvox DIY Envelope Generator. I bought the Polyvox DIY kit from Erica Synths about a year ago. It consists of all the modules you need to build your own replica Polyvox synth, including a couple of oscillators, a filter, mixer, LFO, and a couple of envelope generators. Each module works wonderfully on its own, and so I've been building them bit by bit as the urge has struck me. I love the sound of the filter, but failed at building the first oscillator. I'll get back to fixing it another day, but today I wanted to talk about the envelope generators. The kit comes with two of them. They are exactly the same. Each has attack, decay, sustain, and release stages, and a trigger input. In addition to the envelope generator output, there is a gate output that stays high for the entire duration of the envelope. Finally, you can put the envelope generator into self-trigger mode, which will re-trigger the envelope again as soon as it is completed. I purchased Erica Synth's Rev 1 of all of these modules. They are now on Rev 2, which are different. Hopefully the basic idea is the same, so you'll get some value from this video regardless of which version you have. My main disappointment is that the modules are not skiff friendly. The cards stick out at a 90 degree angle from the faceplate, and they are too deep to fit in my live case, which is where I intended to put them. The Rev 2 modules are skiff friendly, so if I build any more in the future, I'll be able to use them in the live rig. But these will work just fine in my studio rack. While the other Erica Polyvox modules are close replicas of the original Russian Polyvox synth, these envelopes are not direct clones. Instead, they are designed in the style of the Polyvox envelopes, but presumably use a better or more reliable design. The modules are very straight ahead through hole construction, with primarily common analog parts. If you aren't using the kit, the transistors might be the only challenging thing to source, and they have a workaround for the most difficult to find transistor. There are also three surface mount resistors that you have to solder between pads on the pots to alter the performance characteristics of them. Soldering surface mount parts can be challenging if you have not done it before. But these three are pretty easy to do. And it is good practice for taking on a much more challenging surface mount build, such as Ornament and Crime. The PCB is attached to the faceplate simply through the four pots which are attached parallel to the PCB. There are a dozen or so wires you then need to add, connecting the PCB to the switches and jacks. So with that, let's jump in. We will take a look at the build at various stages without going into all the details. Once we have it completed, we will wire it up, have a listen, and take a look on the oscilloscope to see what we have. Okay, so here's the Erica Synth's Polyvox ADSR so far. Uh, it's been a very straightforward build up to this point. You can see that the PCB is uh, pretty darn dense. It's all uh, analog through hole, pretty easy stuff. There are nine, count them, nine ICs on this one board. Um, and as you can see, there are all of these 100 nanofarad coupling, or excuse me, 100 nanofarad bypass capacitors all over the place that are used to be able to stabilize the power going to those ICs. Up to now it's been really easy. Um, nothing, nothing to write home about. We're going to have to put a couple of surface mount resistors in where the pots go in a second. Okay, so here's the first sort of challenging part of the build. We have to put 4.7K surface mount resistors across those points to deform the, the performance of the pots themselves. So uh, this always is a little bit challenging and I am far from an expert at putting surface mount stuff on by hand, but I'll, uh, I'll give it my college best try. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a flux pen and just put a little dab of flux there to help aid in the flow of the solder. And I'm gonna put a blob of solder right here. 
Now I have to pick up the resistor, which is the size of a grain of rice, with a pair of tweezers, and bring it over. We're going to heat up the solder. Okay, perfect. And it was enough to be able to hold it in place. So now we're going to tack down the other end. All right. And now once that end is held, then we're going to go back and redo this end. Presto, all done. Um, the only trick, of course, is that we have now covered over the holes that the pots are going to go into. So when we get into actually assembling the pots next, we're going to have to heat up each side separately to be able to push the pot, the pot leg through to be able to make it work. Okay, all six of the surface mount resistors have been mounted onto the two uh, channels of the ADSR that I am building. Okay, so now we're at the point where we've completed uh, all of the stuff on the PCB. So the circuit is done, the pots are in, everything is in on the board. All we're going to have left to do is to put the switches and knobs into the panel and then connect them all up together. But before we do that, we're going to test to make sure that there aren't any, any problems, uh, any voltage issues, any short circuits, anything like that, before we put all of the chips in. So the first thing that we're going to do while it's down here is we're going to check power. And that's very, very easy with these kinds of things. We just have a, uh, we, we use our voltmeter set in short circuit mode. And then I'm going to come over here to the power connection. And here's plus 12. If I touch both plus 12 rails, I see that they beep as they should. But when I touch plus 12 and ground, nothing. And when I touch, touch ground and minus 12, nothing. And when I touch plus 12 and minus 12, nothing. So that's good. So we know that there aren't any power shorts directly within the system. So we'll try the other one and make sure it's the same. Yep. And ground to minus 12 and minus 12 to plus 12. No shorts there. All of that's good. Next thing we're going to do is take these upstairs to the modular, plug them into the test power rig, and then check to make sure the proper voltages are going to the power inputs on the chips. If all of those check out, then we'll put the chips in and continue on with the build. Okay, before we put the chips in, we're going to do one more safety test here on our boards, and that is to go along and check and make sure that the voltages going to the ICs are correct. And it is. For example, here we go to this op amp circuit, and I can see that I've got plus 12 on one side, minus 12 on the other side. We'll go here, we'll check. Plus 12, minus 12. And what you do is you go around the board checking all of the different areas until you find until you confirm that the power inputs coming into each pin is correct. So there's our 12 volts right there, and so a bit right across from it over here is our negative 12. Exactly. So once you go through doing all of those, then you're ready to put in the ICs, and then we take it to the end of this project. Okay, well, we are nearing the end of our build. Uh, last thing we did was to check to make sure that we had power going to the ICs. Everything was copacetic, so we put the actual chips in. And now over here, we have the front panels with the pots and the audio jacks plugged in, the switches and the audio jacks plugged in. And you can see that the basics of a ground path is already set. So now the next thing that we're gonna do is attach this to that thusly, this to that thusly, put the, run the pots through the thing to hold it in place, and then we'll attach the wiring up to connect the PCB to the switches and to the jacks, and we'll be all done. Okay, the modules are done. They've been put together, wired. There's a few wires that you have to put in on either side. 
all of that stuff's in. Everything has been put together and I even put the little knobs on. So these guys are ready to go. Let's take them upstairs and see how they work. Okay, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. I've plugged in both of them. They're both behaving exactly the same way, which is good, but the problem is that the attack and the decay values are both really off as far as the throw of the pots go. So let me show you what's going on and then we'll take it downstairs and figure out what I did wrong. So here's the attack. It's already over halfway through the pot. Now we're starting to hear some attack. And there we go. So this part in here is the whole thing. And the decay is even worse. If we start moving it up. We have to get all the way to the end. All right, let's take it downstairs and figure out what we did wrong. Okay, the bug was easily found. Uh, the little surface mount resistors that were supposed to get soldered onto the back of the PCB got soldered onto the front of the PCB. And the result of that is that they are between the wrong poles on the pots and therefore the throw of the pots is completely off. So unfortunately that means I'm going to have to get in there with some solder braid and a solder sucker, disconnect all of the pots, pull the surface mount resistors off and put them back in if I can get them to work. Otherwise I'm going to have to use larger resistors and, you know, just, just solder them onto the back instead. All right, here we go. Okay. Problem solved. I had to take the panel off, pull it apart, take all the pots out, then remove the surface mount resistors, <laughs> turn them around, put them on the other side of the PCB, re-solder the pots in, and that was it. Easy. Let's see if it fixes it. Okay, the last step in getting things ready is trimming the, the input resistors. So if we take a look here, we can see that I've got there are two of these teeny tiny little trim pots in there, and we need to adjust those to be able to make sure that the voltage coming in will actually trigger the ADSR the way that we want it to. So I've got one, I've got it connected to ground and to the one of the pins on the side of the pot. And if we look over here, we can see that I've got it trimmed up to about two and a half volts. That seems like a pretty reasonable number in order to be able to make sure that it will trigger appropriately when it gets trigger in from any of my various trigger or gate signals, but at the same time, it won't just trip all the time by itself. Okay, those fixes did the trick. Uh, and now we've got it set up here. We've got the output of one of the ADSRs going into both a VCA with an oscillator coming into it and the JYE Tech digital oscilloscope, little DIY oscilloscope that was about 40 bucks or so. So let's turn it on into self-generation mode and see what we got. zipping along there. Let's start by slowing down the attack so it actually makes some sense. There we go. Let's do the same thing with release. Sounds pretty good. Let's see what it sounds like to bring up the attack and the release to make a really long note.
Okay, and as we move the time range of the oscilloscope out, we can get a better sense of how these really long attack release envelopes work, but it takes a long time to be able to see them. All right, so it's basically working. So now let's go plug in a gate signal so we can see the entire ADSR function. And now, as you can see, um, we are getting envelope out of the ADSR. I have my sequencer just sending a trigger pulse into the trigger input of the ADSR, and you can see what's coming out on the other end at the oscilloscope. So it looks like it's all working. So that's it for this episode of Under the Big Tree. If you like, join the conversation by sharing your thoughts and experiences on this topic in the comments section below. As always, if you like what we're doing here on Under the Big Tree, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For now, this is Nick, signing off.